Uh, so today I will be talking about the second part of Mado Monogatari. Uh, I already talked about the first part and the series in general, but basically this uh, this game is where Puyo Puyo came from. So these are dungeon crawling games or dungeon crawlers. And yeah, so it's pretty different from Puyo Puyo. Uh, I already played the first one, so if you want to look at that or watch that, go back and watch it. But this is the second part. So let's get started. So this time the game starts you off and this dude named Shezo finds you. He asks for your power and Iro mistakes him for a pervert. Long story short, you get sent to this underground prison where you have to find a way out. For some reason, Aro mentions that she used her sexual charm to distract the guards so you can get the key. I mean, okay. I didn't think Aro was like that, but yeah. Anyway, so the game is more of the same. All of the interface and the options are still the same. You have a map, you move around, you have items, you can save, etc. But you can see some graphical differences obviously in Arl. She is 16 now opposed to when she was in kindergarten so she looks much older. She does say the same things. I guess that a kindergarten girl wouldn't have said she used sex appeal to get the keys but yeah anyways still she's just 16 mm, it keeps bothering me at the beginning of the prison part you find this uh, bird that's kind of big and I expected it to be much stronger but I didn't have much of a problem in beating him I thought it was pretty funny that when you use fire he burns to a crisp like a chicken And he's like really small now. Stuff like this is part of the game's charm. You keep going forward, this little bird thingy finds you and he, oh, he or she, I'm not sure. He tells you that he will give you a staff in exchange for a gem, which is located in the underground of this, um, this labyrinth. Then after that, you find Shezo. And he was pretty tough, but not as much as other bosses in the other game. And something unexpected happens here. You would expect that you just beat him and he leaves, but no. So you can see he just started bleeding like hell. And when you give him the final blow, this happens. The head falls off. And I was like, what? And then the head is floating and you have to beat it again. That's kind of traumatizing too. I don't know which one was worse. This or the kindergarten kids melting in the first game. But yeah. I didn't have a hard time beating him. It's just the head. What could he do? Anyways, after you beat him, another boss appears. And that dude looks like almost like something from uh, Resident Evil. But yeah, I beat him anyways. And so you start off inside of this um, ruins and the, one of the first enemies you will encounter is 
the Draco Kentauros. And this character is pretty famous in the Puyo Puyo series now. But she's not like a boss or anything, she's just a, a regular enemy. And she's not easy to beat, but she's not really tough either. And the store is almost the same as before. You have a vendor on almost each of the floors. And yeah, you just buy and sell. And in one of the floors, you will find this pig named Pigura, who will ask you for money. And in exchange, he will give you a staff. But he won't give it to you in the, at the moment. And he says to come back later. He kept saying it wasn't ready, so I was like, oh well, whatever. I had enough money anyways. And you can also find a vampire on this floor. He will suck up your blood, or I should say MP, so be careful with that. Also, when you beat him, he turns sometimes into white ash that you can pick up as an item. Make sure you don't use this unless you want to fight him again because he will come back to life. On one of the last floors, you will meet Namiya, which is like this woman with a snake's body. Uh, I never got to beat her normal. She kept getting eaten by another enemy and when you beat the other enemy, you will get double experience points. After you find all of the gems and put them on the floor, you will meet Satan. This guy. So he keeps telling you that basically he likes Arl and he wants her to be the queen. But she doesn't want to obviously. The funny thing is he keeps telling Arl to give her love for him or to him. But in the battle, he keeps yelling, die, die. And I thought that was very funny. Anyways, he's pretty tough. Compared to all of the other characters, he is tough. I used the same method as before and buffed up my attack. One thing to note, if you pay that piggy that was in the middle of the one of the dungeon, he will come and save you from one hit, one death. When you have a very low HP, he will show up and give you the staff which recovers all of your HP and MP. Anyways, so after you be him, you find the gem. But it's encrusted into Carbuncle's head or his forehead. And you can see here he's really really afraid of Arl because he thinks that she will take it out of his head. But I thought it was really cute to see Carbuncle being afraid like that because in the newer games they're always together and he's now like the mascot of Puyo Puyo or was the mascot of Puyo Puyo. I don't know about now because in the newer games Arrow is not even the main character but yeah. But since when I see Carbuncle all I can think about is Puyo Puyo and how he dances around in the middle of the screen while you're playing Puyo Puyo. I think it was cute to see him like that. Anyway, so you get out of the ruins and now Arrow and Carbuncle is together. And that marks the end of Madomonogatari Nichome, which is kind of important in the story because now Carbuncle is with Arrow and now you know why he's with Arrow or she. Does he have a gender? I am not even sure. So, uh, that was my playthrough of Malobonogatari Nichome or Malobonogatari 2. I think that this one was much easier than the first one. It may be because I got used to playing it. Um, I got a hang of uh, how the they call it the fuzzy system where you can't see any of the stats works. And I also, I also thought that it was less gross in terms of enemies and the text <laughs> descriptions of the enemies but there were still some moments where it was kind of freaky like where Shizu got his head chopped off and stuff 
But yeah, I enjoyed it too and I thought it was a good game or a good story since um, you do get to meet Carbuncle for the first time and it was interesting to see how Arl met Carbuncle. Uh, I will play the third one, I still don't know when because I'm trying to finish other games that I have on my backlog but I will get to it soon. <laughs> soon. Anyways, uh, so let me know in the comments what you thought about this game and thank you very much for watching and have a great day, bye bye.